Uh, all right, so quick question. Developers, how many developers do we have in the room? Okay, that's, that's a good, that's 50% more? 60, yeah? Uh, like operation people, like, you know, creating clusters and all that stuff. Good, 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 good. How many K-native users do we have in the room? Okay, okay, interesting, okay, okay. Who, who does nothing? <laughs> okay. Who is holidays here, yes. Let's, who is go, let's go hang holidays? out after. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we will be doing kind of like some uh, K-native uh, project updates, and then I will be doing some demos, like around functions. So if you're a developer, maybe that's your thing. Uh, we are looking for more developers, so if you're a developer in the room and you want to get involved uh, with different languages, that would be great, right? Yep, so that's one of the things that we're doing. Yeah, are we ready? Not, not yet, I oh. think that we need to wait. This is like a very on time. Oh, on like, time, okay. yeah, yeah, Can't start time early thing. and leave early. No, because there is the live stream. Oh, I see. So, oh, cool. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, we, the two of us are here, but Luke is not here. Uh, he's based in Japan. Uh, he's pretty much the mastermind behind the functions and stuff that I will be showing. So, yeah, if you can go uh, to the Knative Slack and give some appreciation there, that will be highly appreciated. Yeah, CNCF yeah. Slack. CNCF Slack, yeah. there you go. CNCF Slack, there you go. Uh, yeah. And thank you for coming. Like, if you're not a gay native user and you want to learn more about gay native, I think that this is the right place. Yeah. All right? We'll be showing kind of like how it works. And if you're um, really close with your neighbor that you're sitting with, you could like stack on top of each other. You could let some more people some more people in. It's <laughs> 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 an inter interesting suggestion, I would say. Yeah. Unfortunately, we cannot auto scale the room, right? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's a sad thing. We'll scale it to zero after the afterward. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> another thing, another thing for rooms. Uh, let me put the timer. Uh, how many here is like first KubeCon ever? Oh wow, great! That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, yeah. So if you haven't been in a maintainer session before, uh, this is a very specific kind of session around like. Um, projects and uh, you know like we do basically try to provide an update of where the project is what we are up to and what's coming and also trying to show and highlight the latest features and, and stuff that it's been released already and the the maturity process inside the cncf as well yeah and we've done other talks in other kubecons like for intro to Knative and things mm -hmm. like that yep. we'll do like a high level thing but ultimately i say go back and you can find resources on the cncf youtube channel there you go and we have worked pretty hard on the getting started guys, so it should be pretty easy to get started with Knative. Uh, uh, so yeah, if you check the site, uh, you can get started there. I think that that's good. One more minute and we will get started. And it's funny because we are waiting, but like then it, the time will go so fast and we will probably not be able to do everything that we wanted to do. Uh, but it is what it is until, until the next one. All right. I look at the stream. Should we start? Yes. Let's do it. Good. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Knead Functions Deep Dive. Mm -hmm. um, let's kind of jump in. Yep. So my name is Mauricio Salatino. I am working with the Knative team for like most, like almost two years. Big fan of the project since it was announced. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, working for a company that's called Diagrid. Uh, we do um, Dapper, something that I will be showing a little bit here with Knative. And I'm also, uh, you know, in the social networks, if you want to reach out. I am uh, doing a lot of open source work. I have a lot of friends in the open source community, and I, it's a pleasure to me, uh, for me to be here presenting about Knative here with Dave, another legend. Look at that picture. <laughs> so. Yes, that is me. I was much younger, and that's why I have... It's not a garbage bag, it's a poncho. Um, <laughs> hey, my name's Dave. I've been a Knative contributor for many years now. I'm the serving lead and I'm on the technical oversight committee. Currently, I'm at Broadcom, which previously was VMware, so that's why I kind of have like here Knative VMware Broadcom because like I don't know who knows what. <laughs> um, I also added my uh, social stuff there, so feel free to add me or just harass me if you care to. <laughs> and that's Luke. Uh, he's, uh, he's working as a principal engineer for Red Hat. He's based in Tokyo, Japan, 
very, very far away. We want him to, to be here, but he couldn't make it this time. Uh, so we send like, a lot of appreciation for him because he's kind of like the mastermind behind the functions project. Yeah, we didn't want to delete the slide. <laughs> yeah, also. So quick agenda, just so you know, we're going to do kind of a quick Key Native overview. We'll do some quick project updates. So you'll see that Key Native has a bunch of sub projects, functions being one of them, but there's a few others. Do a function overview with the demo. And if you have time, I'll kind of cover like how function kind of pairs well with the serving sub project that we have. Um, so to start, Key Native was founded in 2018. Uh, it's been incubating in the CNCF in, since 2022. And kind of like the way we frame it is like, it's a bunch of open source building blocks. You can use it to build the serverless things. Um, and then you'll kind of see when I kind of dig down into it, like what that really means. Um, I kind of highlighted, I think like the main subcomponents here and the way to think about it is they can work independently with each other or sorry, independently, or they can work together. If you use essentially everything together, then kind of what you can get out of the box is essentially like a function as a service running on Kubernetes that can like scale to zero. Um, mm -hmm. So you can see like serving will scale your workloads based on traffic. Eventing does um, connecting sources to those running containers, and it doesn't necessarily have to work with Knative serving. You can target and ship events to Kubernetes deployments, Kubernetes services, or any other kind of workloads that are addressable. Mm -hmm. um, the client is all the like function work and uh, to create and update those things. Yeah. Um, and functions is essentially kind of like what we're highlighting here. It's like a programming model where you have, um, where it's not opinionated about the framework you use when you kind of develop these functions, but we do try to make it easier um, mm -hmm. to deploy and build, run and test these things locally. Um, quick project updates. The user experience group is something that's been uh, kicked up again. They are looking for user interviews. So yeah, I would say even if you're a first time user, mm -hmm. highly recommend go to this URL, sign up. It would be great to see um, road roadblocks people hit when they um, read our docs, uh, go through our tutorials and things like that. So. Can people take a screenshot of this slide? <laughs> yeah, that will be super, super appreciated too. Yeah. yeah, we're really trying to make the onboarding super smooth and straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of funny. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as part of that, uh, one fun thing that you did was design a new mascot. So this is our new mascot, Quack. Um, <laughs> there you go. We don't have stickers for it yet. Next time we will yeah. have stickers, <laughs> that's for sure. Yes. And if you contribute, you get stickers too. And maybe, maybe a t-shirt, we're trying to figure that out. Yeah, and the user working group is also trying to um, source contributors as well to help with um, the initiatives they have, especially. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Um, the client update. Um, so client is, like I mentioned, is kind of like the CLI for Knative and like the function stuff. One thing that they actually did in the last kind of quarter was have like a 48 hour function hackathon. So mm -hmm. the structure of that was you set up a whole bunch of issues that were very like, tailored to new users to contribute. Um, and then there's like a cool presentation that everyone did afterwards. And it was all distributed and remote. So yeah. if you're interested in trying to get involved in Knative, I think things like this, the events that kind of you hold is a good way to kind of like segue into the community and so forth like that. And we purposely do these things so that you have the support where it's not just some random issue you pick up, but it's actually like, hey, we'll have Zoom sessions, uh, like, mm -hmm. and then we can do mentorship that way. Uh, for eventing, um, like I mentioned, this is what connects like event sources, enrichment, um, and then shipping to your uh, like Knative serving workloads or regular Kubernetes workloads. Um, one thing they're adding is like the like, TLS encryption between what is brokering the events, like figuring out where to send it to the actual workload. And they're really working on event discovery and they're trying to do which I like this event catalog. That's always been an issue in eventing, discovering what events and what's, what attributes you can route things on. Um, mm -hmm. And kind of one thing I'm really happy about is we have like this RabbitMQ integration and before it was made by, maintained by some people at my team at VMware. Now it's gonna be maintained by the actual Rabbit team that works on RabbitMQ, which is actually awesome. Do we have any RabbitMQ users here? Okay, so we have, cool. oh, oh, okay. Look. Oh, a lot. Yeah, there you go. I will let them know. So they're, yeah. if you go to the repo, it'll say like deprecate, <clears throat> but we're onboarding them right now, which is awesome. 
They also were involved with the initial writing of that. Just, just for people to know, right, like that integration allows you to exchange events across different systems without actually using the RabbitMQ client. So you are just emitting events to HTTP endpoints, brokers, and then the routing happens on the Knative eventing layer. Yeah, like, apologies that this isn't like an intro talk that yeah. explains this. Like, Rabbit isn't the only solution there. Mm -hmm. um, Kafka is the other one, and then yeah. I think there might be another bus. Mm -hmm. Was okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think Kafka and Rabbit are the main ones. Mm -hmm. uh, for the security working group, so essentially as part of being part of the CNCF, they do um, a security audit. Mm -hmm. We've done that. We addressed. I think there's like two issues at least. Yeah. Um, there's a blog post that details it. Security is also one of the things we could use contributors for, um, but I'm not an expert on that. The security expert is actually <laughs> couldn't get into in the retainer talk, but he's outside. <laughs> okay. so, um, and for steering, so if folks aren't familiar, um, Knative actually has like a governance structure. So we have a technical oversight committee, we have working groups, those working groups have leads, um, and steering is kind of responsible for like the success of the project overall. Um, so as part of, they essentially <laughs> were the ones who helped get Knative into the CNCF mm -hmm. and into the incubation stage. Um, one thing we're doing now is uh, they submitted the proposal for us to be a graduated project. Mm -hmm. So that's on its way there. Yep. Cool. So should we get going? Yeah. Okay, let's do the, now it's the painful part, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so. Yeah, I'm handing it off to Mircio to, I did the easy part. He's no, 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 you, you need to help me here. You need to help me. Okay, so what I wanted to do, I don't know, is that big enough for the back? Yes, okay, I can see people saying yes. Uh, so what I wanted to show is like, I wanted to show a little bit of the functions work that it, it's uh, been going on uh, lately in the project. Um, there has been a lot of work into trying to improve like the experience for function developers. And Knative Functions is basically this uh, CLI tool that will help you to create functions in different languages and to basically deploy them into running clusters, right? The idea of going for creating a function to a function running in a cluster is kind of like uh, the main idea behind this CLI. What I wanted to show you here is a little bit of the experience that we have today. And I wanted to show kind of like uh, the new kind of like changes and the new approaches. And for that, we will be creating some functions in Go in this case. And that's why I was telling before that we need some developers, right? Like we created this experience, it's optimized for Go now. It actually can be implemented in many other languages and many other frameworks, but we need help from the community from those languages to make sure that the integration actually feels natural for the tools that you are already using. The whole idea here again is that I will be creating functions and we will see the abstraction layer that we have built to create this experience a little bit more, uh, a little bit better, right? Uh, I need to run a couple of commands. I will just copy all these commands, but what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a function inside the directory. And I'm doing that by running this command that it's called func init-l or language, and I'm using the Go template here. Yeah, and kind of what Mitchell was saying, yeah, I think that. right now let's out of this. the box we have Node, Java, mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are an expert in some language we don't support, like I've been wanting to learn OCaml, but yep. I don't know anything about that. I, it'd be cool to have a function template for that. So if you're an expert, that would be awesome. Yeah, 100%. So that's how you create a function, basically. That's how you initialize it. And you can see here in code that now I will probably have a bonjour um, directory here. And it has a bunch of files, including a func.jml file. And then by default, we create like a simple function inside it with this kind of like handle method, which is basically receiving HTTP requests. Right? But there is no HTTP server or anything here, and that's pretty much what's being provided by the function framework. I will delete this basic implementation and this example that it's basically um, just uh, printing out, echoing the request that we are sending, so we can create like a function uh, from scratch. And I will do that by running this command, this command here. Yeah, and then kind of the one thing to add to is like, mm -hmm. when you saw the handler, um, yep. We don't have any external dependencies on any sort of like Knative uh, library tooling. And what, what does that mean? Because there's a lot of function frameworks out there that mm -hmm. require you to rewrite your app to be like a function exactly. using um, uh, like their proprietary libraries. So we try to keep it straightforward where uh, in this example, we're mm -hmm. using just the standard library, Golang's HTTP response writer and request, which kind of looks like an HTTP handler. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other bit is we're also a little bit opinionated in our eventing 
um, module where we use cloud events. That's a standard that's in the CNCF, like another project. Really all it is is just um, a payload with like some specific headers. What those headers let you do is um, route traffic based on on what's, the what requests. the content essentially. So in addition to the Go template that mm -hmm. uh, Mercio used, you can also specify like a Go cloud event template and then it'll do like a special handler if you're doing cloud events. If you're doing cloud events, exactly. So what I'm doing here is I've just created kind of like a new file here. Uh, it's called bonjour.go and basically what I'm copying here is the function code, uh, again, like for a very simple, simple, simple function that just prints to the output, right? I need to do some imports here. I've initialized the Go module here uh, called Bonjour, and you will see that there is nothing much more in the function beside that handle method, right? Yeah, so he's got some extra stuff there. Yeah, um, exactly. So I can kind of highlight that. Yep. If you were to get rid of this alive and ready, mm -hmm. um, you would just, you, you, all you really need is that handle method. What, exactly. What that alive and ready stuff does, it hooks into, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, there's a thing like pod readiness mm -hmm. and pod liveliness. Yep. So kind of again, similar where if these functions are present, mm -hmm. um, we will then wire that up to those um, lifecycle hooks. Yep, but the handle function is pretty simple. It just receives like an HTTP, you know, uh, writer and a request, and then you can just do whatever you want in there. And as um, Dave mentioned, there is no dependency here to get any functions at all. It's just a, a Go simple uh, program, right? And that basically what allows me to do is um, it allows me to do to, uh, it allows me to run the function locally uh, using the host builder basically. So we can just run it locally without the need for containers. And I think that this has been kind of like one of the main changes that we added now. So I can do something like func run, and let's see if this runs. You can see that the function started in port 8080. So I can basically do um, HTTP uh, localhost 8080, and there you go. So that's the function running locally without any container. But we all know that you know, if we want to run this in Kubernetes, we will just need to create a container and deploy it into a cluster by creating some manifest to, do, uh, to configure how this function will run inside the cluster, right? With functions, we can just stop this and we can actually run a single command, func deploy, to deploy this into a Kubernetes cluster. I didn't mention that, but I have a cluster already, of course. I have a kind cluster here and I have no, no bots running in there, right? So if I do func deploy, and if everything works as expected, we should have a function deployed after running that command. So one thing to kind of add, um, if you kind of look at the details here, mm -hmm. he, Bertio mentioned he's using the host builder. Well, what does that really mean? It means he's using the local tool chain on your machine to build. If you need something maybe more hermetic, then you have additional options. So originally I think uh, you can use build packs mm -hmm. is one. So yep. actually that'll either build locally using I think the pack CLI. Mm -hmm. um, or I think Red Hat has uh, like a source to image yeah. uh, tooling, which is very similar to this. So you have a, like, in addition to like, um, where you, there's no opinions about um, the handle function method, we have like optionality with what builder you use. Yeah, well. and it's kind of interesting, like just by default, you get like all the architectures for that function uh, being built already and published to my local registry in this case. Uh, this is being published into that registry. You can configure your own registry or Docker Hub or you know the GitHub repository, GitHub container registry too. And then again, at the end, you have that URL where you can just basically call it and just get back the function payload, right? That's pretty straightforward, like two commands. You created a simple Go file, and then you got have a, a Got a soft clap over there. The guy was clapping on his, on like, his so, wrist. It's soft clap, <laughs> soft clap, because we need to hold our horses. We will do more stuff. That's the hello world, of course. So that, like, that's not even impressive at all. One thing to notice here is, and I think that this is, pretty, this is really important, at least for me as a developer, what is that HTTPS thingy there? Like, you know, I'm usually starting things locally, port 8080, HTTP, but here, like Knative is already providing me certificates and HTTPS connection out of the box for the function, right? And again, for me as a developer, this is, this is great. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny when we did the survey of um, who's new to KubeCon, who's new to yeah, Knative. Yeah. In hindsight, we probably should have done an yeah. uh, intro to Knative. Talk. To Knative, <laughs> yes, exactly. But yeah. I guess that this shows also kind of like interesting um, enough. We are going. Yeah. Like, like the thing to add, the one thing that serving does, not only does it scale to zero, it allows mm -hmm. the operator to configure a whole bunch of stuff that then separates that responsibility from de developers. Mm -hmm. One is, for example, network programming. Um, yeah. If you set up Istio or if you set up Contour or something else, um, then are you making your developers write 
Istio resources, Contour resources. Exactly. Um, that's something Knative serving abstracts away. Um, likewise, we do the same with like certificate management. Mm -hmm. uh, if you install a cert manager, Knative can do the programming of the cert manager, um, and the operator just has to configure like a few things, like the domain mm -hmm. and um, that stuff. And then when you do the deployment, like uh, for example, Mirchio just did the function stuff. It provisioned a certificate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then wired up all that network programming. Exactly. That, that's why, kind of like I mentioned earlier, uh, these things can work independently. You can technically not deploy a function and bring your own container, like mm -hmm. Nginx or something. Um, but when you do use a function, like we integrated everything well together. Yeah, exactly. And as you can see, right, like this is all about Kennedy serving, auto scaling, right? So the function is being downscaled to zero. I don't have any more bots running in my cluster after calling the function and not calling it again for a period of time. And I wanted to show one more thing, so I will just call the function again, so it out to scale up again. And uh, it's now, of course, boot, like it's kicking up like the autoscaler, creating a new um, instance of that function, which is already running. And uh, now I can just do, for example, logs, just to make sure that we see the, you know, the lifecycle uh, endpoints that we have now, right? So this is Kubernetes checking with the function if it's ready and if it's alive. And I think it's important to mention here again that these kind of like uh, hook points into the function life cycles are important because we are building more and more, right? Now we have hook points for when the function starts, so you can execute some code, maybe connecting to infrastructure, maybe loading some data into the function memory so it actually can be used whenever the user is calling this handle method, right? Like the function from outside. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with the stuff, um, mm -hmm. with the, like, especially readiness, like you don't want your container receiving traffic before it can actually um, process yeah. it. Exactly. And then you'll drop it. And this really happens, especially when people update a deployment, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I would definitely consider that as a, like a best practice for Kubernetes. Yeah, exactly. Again, no dependencies with the function framework here at all. And that basically means that we can start doing things with these functions that are a little bit more interesting, right? Like things that you will want to do with functions. Maybe you want to call another function. So let's copy some more text here from my, from my file because I can live code, but like writing all this uh, by hand live I would just mess it up for sure. So what we are doing here is just, we are just calling another function using you know, the, the standard HTTP client uh, from Go. And uh, what we are calling here is just, you know, just using, again, normal Go libraries, uh, the net HTTP package. And we are calling kind of another function that is called croissants because we are like uh, in, in Paris. So we need some croissants in the session. I've had too many, honestly. You have too many? Every morning, I eat like at least two or three. <laughs> I cannot have too many. You cannot have too many croissants. So again, it's just a client, just calling another function. As you can see, uh, again, I don't have any pods, uh, but there is a function there in the cluster already, get um, the Knative services, and you can see that there is an endpoint there waiting for requests. So if I do func deploy here, what we can see is that, okay, we'll build again the function because we made some changes, so it, know, it understands that we need to build it again, and then just publish the next version of the function that we can call again. So um, if I do uh, HTTPS and I call the function, oh. Uh, there you go. So we get some croissants, right? And this is basically chaining too many, too many croissants there. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Well, but the, the, the main idea here is that, you know, I call a function that was just started and this is calling another function that needs to start. And it actually, you know, kind of, kind of works fine. Of course, now that we have two instances, it's going to be faster, right? Like we don't need to wait for the cold start of the functions, but it's kind of changing the things. And when you can start doing these things, the next thing that I wanted to show you is that you can now start adding some other frameworks to do common stuff. Like, you know, maybe you want to store croissants in a database because that's your thing. It's, I haven't done it before in my life, but maybe we can just uh, try that out. What do you think? How do you plan on doing that? Well, so there are like different options, right? <laughs> this is a very good question. So there are different options. I can come here and add like, you know, like my Redis client or my, you know, PostgreSQL client and just connect to it. Or I can use some other CNCF projects that basically allow developers to do the same, but just calling APIs. We know that we can call REST endpoints already, right? So what I'm going to show now is I'm going to use the Dapper project, which is the project, uh, another project that I'm working on, which allows us to do that. Just we call endpoints and then we just interact with infrastructure without like, pushing and adding dependencies into the, you know, into the function runtime here. So let's try to do that. Um, it's not that complicated as it sounds. I will just install a Helm chart that gives me the Dapper control plane into my cluster. Dapper works uh, by injecting sidecars to 
my applications, in this case, my functions. And we have built this integration between Knative functions and Dapper that by default, Dapper functions, uh, sorry, uh, Knative functions are Dapper enabled by default. That basically means that if Dapper is installed in the cluster, the function will have access to these Dapper APIs. And I will show you that in, in a second. Um, the main idea here is that Dapper will expose you, you know, like HTTP or gRPC endpoints, so you are free to choose which kind of like transport do you want to use. But because I've just showed you how to get croissants using HTTP, we will keep using HTTP for now, but of course that you can use gRPC if you want to. Yeah, the, the other thing to add to is, mm -hmm. um, so Kenya was serving, like I mentioned, is kind of like you can bring your own container, but I really should have said bring your own containers. So in theory, you can bring, um, your own sidecar, not mm -hmm. necessarily Dapper, but or like something Any else. Any other sidecar, yeah. yeah. Like exactly. as, as an example, a lot of people um, use the sidecar to do, like pull in some other extra information. Mm -hmm. um, like if you do AI stuff, you can pull your model in as a sidecar as, to get a cacheability. Exactly. And then you kind of reach out to that as that um, helper. Exactly. So the, the thing that I want to do now is I basically want to install a Redis you know, instance into my cluster. And I want to configure Dapper, the Dapper sidecar, to be able to connect to that, to that Redis instance. And I'm doing that with two, basically with three files that are here. So the first one, of course, I have a Redis service. This is just a normal Kubernetes service for Redis. And then I'm just creating a deployment for the Redis stack image. That will give me a Redis instance. But again, I don't want my application, my function, to connect to that Redis instance directly by adding the Redis client that you can do, of course. I want to use the Dapper abstraction so I can call an HTTP endpoint from my function to store some data into Redis, or some croissants, I should say. So in this case, I have uh, one uh, Dapper uh, component that is called State Store. And again, this is the Redis implementation. You can swap this for other state stores like PostgreSQL or managed services. And this is where my Redis uh, instance is running, right? Like in the cluster, Redis service and the default password that Redis creates. So let's apply that. Again, that's Dapper. If you're interested, just check it out. But what it, this is doing is basically giving my functions the possibility to access this infrastructure by just doing HTTP requests. And that's what I'm going to do next. Yeah, I'm going to go to my function. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to add, like, like okay. I mentioned before, because we don't want to be opinionated about, mm -hmm. um, like, with our function handlers and library, this essentially gives you portability, right? between yes. your data store. Exactly. And we want to demonstrate that you can use, uh, basically that you can do whatever you want inside of your exactly. functions, right? But one common thing to do is to store data from functions and then retrieve data, right? Like just to store some state. And again, I just wanted to make sure that I can connect to my local instance just to show you that this was just installed. Uh, let me see. You see, that's an old test. Oh, I've never seen this dashboard. Yes. It's really nice, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm not sure like about the license change that they announced okay. yesterday, but let's not, let's not go the there. Politics here. Yeah, yeah, let's not go there. Let's not go there. So, uh, OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add to my uh, Bonjour function the possibility to store uh, data into Redis which is something that you probably want to do, uh, not Redis, but just to store data somewhere. And for that, I'm just defining some variables about where the Dapper APIs are, and then the name of the component that I'm using. And then I'm just doing uh, an HTTP request to those APIs. Let me show you this, which I think is important just to highlight the, uh, the, the, the note that uh, they was doing about like having other sidecars alongside of our functions, right? So I think that that should be it. Do I need to import these two? Yes. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing another HTTP request to localhost in this case, because again, this is a sidecar, so it will run in the same namespace as my function, my same networking, uh, um, my same network as my, my function. So localhost, the port for Dapper, and then I'm just doing kind of like a request, a post request to state, a slash the name of the state store that I'm using. And then I'm sending basically a JSON payload here, right? It's like a key value store, Redis. So I'm sending Paris as a key and then value microsans. And let's see if that uh, kind of like actually works. So I want to change that, uh, say the bonjour, and then fun deploy. And then, you know, this is where the demo can just go super, super wrong. Uh, they're just doing HTTP requests. It shouldn't be that hard. You're overloading it with croissants. Yeah, maybe too many croissants for, for my machine, but let's see. All right. So after the function gets built, I should have a URL again for the function. And I should be able to call the function and see if it's working or not. There you go. So I have the function, and I have the new instance there running. Probably the old instance was downscaled already, so I will just call it again. And of course, we have the same message, but now this state is going to be stored into my Redis instance. Let's refresh here. 
with the refresh button. Yes, mm -hmm. there you go. So we have a state store, and I don't know if you can see that, but we have some croissants. <laughs> Uh, some croissants, we have some croissants between quotes there. I don't know the quotes why, but like something probably silly that I messed up. Uh, but it's good. Now we have the croissants inside the database. I'm surprised it actually renders. It the renders the, the emojis. <laughs> yeah. That's funny, funny hey, business. Yeah, I'm seeing this for the first time too. It's funny, funny, <laughs> funny business, you know. But okay, just to finish kind of like the demo and just to, to highlight this, I just wanted to show kind of like also that you can add libraries into your functions because again, you might want to retrieve these croissants to eat them at some point probably after the session. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a second function, a second function that it's called Orboa, of course, again. And I just will run all these things, which is creating a directory, creating a function, removing the default handler, and we will create a new one. Yeah, so the, the scaffolding is there for your benefit, not for the demo's benefit. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. I think that that's pretty much it. I'm inside the new function now, but I can go here into uh, my VS code and see if it's here. Yes, I don't have any, any, any Go uh, file, so I will just create a new one. And this is where I suffer. I always typing my, my, yes, my, my French is, 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 is not good enough, I would say. So the next thing, again, function, basic function thing. Again, you can see here, I, I'm not defining the liveness and readiness uh, hooks, but that's fine. Yeah, they're optional. They are optional. Uh, I will just deploy the first version just to make sure that, you know, I have a function that it's OK. And then I will just add a library and see if I can retrieve the store back from uh, my Redis uh, state store. Do you mind going back to the code for a minute? Yes, let's go here. Yeah, I just want to highlight. So one thing I haven't covered yet is like there's this new method. Yes, so that's important. In theory, you can get rid of the struct and just have a handle method. Mm -hmm. um, reason why we kind of added the optionality to have this instance mm -hmm. is um, then you're not necessarily using global state. So you can, if you have a long initializing uh, mm -hmm. time, like as an example, if you have a handle method and you need to go and fetch that something mm -hmm. uh, when your function starts, that's essentially why we added this new method. So it's part of the function lifecycle. Yeah, exactly. Which is pretty important when you're building kind of like tons of functions that are doing a lot of initialization. Yeah, code like like as an example, state. you could initialize like your sidecar client or Dapper client, Redis mm -hmm. client, mm -hmm. like in that new method, so you're not. Because I, I think when you create it, it pings the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can avoid that. Good point there. Good point. Let's just call this new version, and then let's add a library there just to get the croissants out of the Redis state, state store. OK, that, that function is working. And then just to finish this off, let me show you this. Again, this is any library that you want, you can include. Uh, there is no restriction from the function, k function framework point of view, of course, that I need to use it. Uh, and then what I'm doing here is I'm using the Dapper Go SDK, which is a simplified way of consuming the Dapper APIs. So instead of doing that, you know, HTTP request that I'm doing here, that it's taking all this boilerplate to configure, I just can use the SDKs to just uh, do the same. And it's a little bit more uh, performant because it's using gRPC behind the covers. Uh, and uh, it's just saving you from dealing with, uh, you know, with other topics that you might not want to uh, be worried about when you are interacting with the Dapper APIs, like you know all the details, all the headers, and all the things that you need to set up. So the thing, the only thing that I'm doing here is I'm doing uh, get state in this case, which is going to go and retrieve a state from the state store that I'm referencing to, and then I'm just defining the key that I want to pick up, right? So if I deploy this again, func deploy, one more thing, one more one more thing that we want to add there. Of course, I need to do go mode tidy just to fetch the dependencies because I'm adding a new library to my Go, uh, my Go function in this case. And when the library is there, everything is fine. We have all the architectures being built, pushed to the registry, and a new version of the function is up and running. So when I call this, uh, we should be able to get our croissants. And that's pretty much the demo, I think. Yeah, what do you think? Awesome. We got it was really tough having to comment while you do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can finish up with all the slides. That looks awesome, yeah. Good, 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 good. Thank you, folks. <laughs> so yeah, um, there's still some more slides. Yeah, I can run through the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of highlighted the function lifecycle, alive, ready. We have the non-opinion function runtime. 
uh, which means like you're not pulling in any like third party dependencies in order to um, mm -hmm. run the function. Um, we use the host builder, but there's also build packs and source the image, and we have a build and deploy that you can do independently. Mm. So if you want to take your function but not run on Knative Serving, it's possible. Yeah. Um, and you can deploy it anywhere you want. Yeah, so I didn't show that, but you can do func build just to create the container and then maybe create your own manifest to deploy that to a cluster, right? Like it's completely independent. Here I was showing kind of like the entire thing, but uh, behind the covers, we are creating all the manifest to deploy the function to the cluster. Yeah, and I'm going to quickly run through some serving slides. So we kind of kind of highlighted or covered all this. like. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a container the URL, it auto scales, it does certificate provisioning. What you didn't see is revision management yeah. and traffic splitting, where every time you modify Knative service, it spits out a revision that lets you uh, roll do back. canary rollouts yeah. and then roll back. And we could do automatic health checks, but it's better to have these alive methods because <laughs> then it actually ties to your application logic if you need to do initialization. It's kind of at a high level, like if you didn't use Knative serving, you'd have to create like horizontal pod auto scalers, deployments, services, ingresses, uh, certificates, like there's like probably five other things. But as an example, under the hood, what Funk deployed did was create this service, put your image in, contain port, and then you get the whole um, URL that has HBS. Okay. Um, one thing that the instant stuff is if you write your functions and you're using global state, um, you don't want concurrency. So one thing is you can, for Knative services, you can set the concurrency to one and then we limit the number of active requests that container can handle all at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna run quickly. Yep. So what does that mean? Hey, when you have concurrency one and I have three requests, I need three pods. If I have concurrency 80, one pod can handle all these three requests. I stole this slide from Google Cloud Run. It's also mm -hmm. Knative API compatible, so you can run workloads on Knative on Kubernetes there. I don't work for Google, I work for VMware. But you can kind of see if you do concurrency one, the um, green is the request count, and then the blue is the instance count. So a higher concurrency will mean that you can um, have less pods handling traffic. Um, and there's like some art to tuning concurrency. Um, if you use low values, it's gonna spin up more instances and you can hit key Kubernetes limits much faster because you have limits on the number of pods that you can have in a node and so forth like that. Mm -hmm. But if you use greater than one, then it's gonna use more memory and CPU and you can't use global state. So you really wanna tune the concurrency um, based yep. on your app. Let's see what else. Scale to zero, I kinda highlight we have this component. Mm -hmm. When things go away, it, like SOS, help me. And then we scale things up. But one thing it also does, the serving stuff, is when you have a ton of requests coming in, our autoscaler detects this, and if you also use a knob to tune what we call burst capacity, you can also have our thing component that scales thing, things from zero act as a shield, like a buffer. Mm -hmm. So that gives the um, Kubernetes and Knative time to like scale up your pods. This is very useful for apps that have uh, long startup time. Mm -hmm. um, I won't say which language. Which language? <laughs> Don't say the language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I kind of highlight the annotation there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a blog post that came out this week that kind of demystifies how this activator component works. So it's very technical deep dive. So if you go mm -hmm. to Kenyan website blog, you'll be able to see it. And oh, nice. thank you and leave feedback. We, we have 10 six. seconds, so let's count down. <laughs> 10. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. If you have any questions, come yeah, in come and up. say hello. Uh, we are, are still around. Yes, and for those that don't do anything, I'll be outside. Let's, yeah, let's go and not do anything. In. Good stuff. Hey, how are you? What's going on?